Jack Billy. Good morning. Hi, Liv. How are you? Good. Enjoying the construction of you. Yeah. Does this town change every time you guys come off the road? Is it like a new building up? Forecast calls yeah. for Crane. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh. Wow, that was pretty good. Well, that was that pretty good. Nice. I, I laughed in spite of myself. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I figured with the bar being set so low from our joke attempts today, it might work. I'm, a, I'm amazed at how quickly they could demolish that. an entire city block to make it, room for something else. I mean, like except for this driving, week yeah. when they threw down all the power lines uh, while they were at it, so that was not so good. Really? But I yeah, didn't even hear about this. They knocked out the power in the gulch. Oh, wow. they knocked down oh, a building wow. and just took the power lines with them. Puffy. <laughs> Puffy. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, 2016. Yes. What's happening? What's coming up? Oh, gosh. Go. We are somehow in the middle of a trifecta of music. Nice. We have three different songs coming out in three different countries just about at the same time. Yeah. So you're... That's interesting. Um, I can explain like, oh, why, but how much how much memory do you have in your camera? Quite a lot. Could, yeah. You got about four hours and fifty four minutes worth. So <laughs> I could do it in under four she hours. She might not you, agree with that. Okay. Um, Speak talk. Yeah, it's, I'd say kind of you know the <clears throat> cliff notes of what's the thinking behind. Is it that, just because it's three it was not by markets? design? Basically, we got a jump start in our career thanks to the Booze Cruise, which we put out independently three years ago, and uh, it never came out. To terrestrial radio as an official single, you know we had a great run on the highway. Thank you, we love you guys. Uh, a couple of stations played it here on their own, but we never released it as an official single. And then when we got a record deal in the states, uh, they went with a different single. Mm -hmm. Meantime, it came out in Canada, went platinum over there. It came out in Australia, went number one over there. Um, but the song keeps creeping up on us over here. Radio keeps asking for it. Can we play it? Can we? Why don't you release it? Yeah. So basically, long story short, we are releasing the Booze Cruise officially as a single in the United States towards the end of March. Excellent. And uh, taking give the people it, what they want. And taking, it has to not re-release it elsewhere. We got it. Yeah, we have right. to a different single in Canada now. Australia. We just put out a single uh, this week called "Why God Made Summertime" because it is their summer right now, mm -hmm. and we're going over there in March to play. A big festival along with some other great acts from the states and then in Canada since they already had the booze cruise we were releasing a song called Tread because it is not their summer it's about to get <laughs> you. you know yes, they're very much not their it's not their summer so uh, that's coming out in Canada in a few weeks right. so we're gonna somehow manage to maneuver through three different songs at the same time don't mix them up when you do your interview <laughs> <laughs> talk about summertime yeah. in Canada when you and I did warn you, so we're gonna dig into um, the thinking behind all of this stuff a little bit. When you release your work, the first time you're like, okay, it's midnight, it's on iTunes, it's available. Let me check Twitter, what people are saying. How does that feel still now after doing it for so many years? Um, I'm pretty. I mean, even I consider feeling. it kind of new still to me. I know to yeah. be new to you. I mean, Absolutely. you might have been a little more. Well, it's amazing that you could get instant reaction to something. You know, you could right. literally put a song out on iTunes, post a video, play something, and then right away you're getting reaction from fans. And you can actually talk to them if you want to. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's incredible to have that. Yeah. And is it anticipation? Is it nervous anticipation? Yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. nodding going on? <clears throat> yeah, I would say that. What yeah, I'm nervous that? usually. Yeah, yeah we, we're all pretty Not obsessive. in a negative way, but... We, we, we'll we'll look at way. all the comments and check how many likes we get and... Uh, chart watch. I guess the, the whole reason, the <laughs> whole you just you just love you want people to to get what you're doing. You want people right. to, or or you want them to at least have an emotional reaction. Like I don't necessarily need everybody to love us, but I can, I do like to know like, have you heard it? Well, did it stir you up at all? You know. But you want them to like you a little bit. <laughs> no, I mean I do. I do. I mean you want your music to yeah. to be yeah. received well, but. I know for us, for me, like Booze Cruise came out, I didn't have any with iTunes. Yeah. It kind of went crazy and got all kinds of love on iTunes. Mm -hmm. And then for a song that we wrote like that and then wrote it in 10, 30 minutes, maybe tops. And then there's songs that we kind of put more effort and energy to and, and really understand are better lyrically or maybe musically. What it doesn't necessarily correlate to fans liking it at all. So it's kind of mixes you up and you're going, okay. What's the end goal for us? Is it to just have fan support or is it to do both? I think we try to do both. 
Did that make any that's sense a at good all? Good point. You did. And yes. I love that you said that because. That's Thank you for getting that because I was confusing myself. With, whereas <laughs> I had an artist that I was having a conversation with. And he had he shall remain nameless in this conversation. Lee Brass. So cameras off. I, I'll tell you. <laughs> okay. But he had you know worked and he's written these amazing songs and they're deep and they're meaningful and they're thoughtful and then he has his first number one hit with like the most commercial flimsy song yeah. he's ever written, and it bothered him. And I understand uh, it. About I get him. it. He was grateful for the success because it gave him an option to do more stuff. But at the same time, it was like. But this stuff is so much more me. Yeah, right. I can understand How does that, that feel? Yeah. Totally. I did, absolutely. And thank you for helping me make more sense of my... my, my uh, <laughs> I want to so to me that think, all makes sense. <laughs> I think for us the end result is we want to uh, move you in any capacity. Whether it's right. make you happy, whether it's make you think, whether it's make you cry, whether it's make you want to go home and have sex with your loved one, or Stay whether it's... Stay and have sex with your loved one. If you want to escape club, your... Yeah. If you want to just escape your life for a few minutes and have a good time yeah. partying with us, that's the end goal. So if it's with a song like The Booze Cruise or a yeah. song like... One Can Be A Lot, which we love. It's a deeper song on our album. Great. If you're happy and you're having a reaction and you're enjoying yourself, yeah. And then just attaching yourself to expecting a fan to, any fan of anything art-wise, is expecting them to agree with you on what's good is not always realistic anyway. You know? yeah, or what you catch yeah. yeah. Well, one of the things that I've, the concept that I've been introducing to people is the idea that when you're being creative, you make yourself vulnerable. Absolutely. Because you're, you're being courageous. Like well, that's why we before, never wear clothes. Like, I watch you guys get up on stage and I think, <laughs> no, no, not me, thank you. That's not, I can't do that. Um, which is why I'm so fascinated with it. Because it's often the people who feel called to write songs, tell their stories, have an introverted streak in them, and they're the people who have to get up in the spotlight. <clears throat> you know, so it's, it's that, that paradox. How do you guys handle that? The need to show up and be yourself and be seen by people, that vulnerable part, how do you handle that? And especially now that it's relatively new, like how yeah. has that, how yeah. are you handling it right now? Yeah, um, <laughs> I mean, I'm a firm believer that if someone sees you doing the thing that you are supposed to do on earth, that they will not only recognize that, but they will go to, to that same place that you you go you know what I mean so they will see you and and they will see just how naturally comfortable you are either on stage or writing a song and they will get go it. there you know and, and so that is so kind of, cool I, I guess in a way you can say you know there might be a, a guy who's now like 13 14 and he's got his yeah. bass guitar and yeah exactly you can go like dude this is what do we, it. You can do this. Exactly. If I can do this. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You can do this. Exactly. Yeah. So by, just, by being yourself. And yes. Doing. Yes. Just p pursuing the thing that you know that you're supposed to pursue. Yeah. P people will see that and they will support you. You know, and that's. Yeah. Hopefully, do the same thing themselves. Yeah, yeah. I think that's and whatever it is they why want. we're all doing. Exactly. It. I was just gonna say, what, what, whatever that creative thing is, whether that's making a song or. You know, putting their handmade jewelry on Etsy. Like exactly. Whatever Absolutely. that is that's yeah. creative, that courage to step out. What I'm interested in for a band, though, that's different from the solo artists I've been speaking with, is people have different comfort levels with this stuff. So for yeah. one person, it's a little easier, for, or in some ways, a little easier, and then other months, it's somebody else who's got it a little easier. How do you guys support each other through that if one person is struggling a little? I would say the initial thing that I thought of is it. it does seem like it would be a little easier with a band. You got your friends up on stage with you. Like we're buddies. We spend right. a lot of time together. I'm not as nervous with these guys in any scenario. This uh, interview was terrifying for me when we started doing it. But you got your buddies with you, and you're like, right. I can goof off. I can got somebody that'll step in if I'm talking too much. I got somebody that'll tell me if my got food in my teeth. I don't know. But then yeah, on stage, yeah. there's also the, the I don't want to let them down thing that you get nervous about. Like I don't want to have a bad show and them be spending so much time on the road and away yeah. from their families and then I get up there and stink it up, you know, so. But on the other hand, they'll know what that feels like because everybody has nights off. Yeah. I think, the, you know, the courage uh, and being creative for in a band starts at the songwriting level. You're sitting in a room together and you're trying to write a song and, uh, you know, 
we, we kind of have a motto saying, don't be afraid to suck. Just throw it out there, whatever it is. And if it's terrible, at least you went for it. And uh, if not, you know, I think the safest thing to do is to not go for anything and to just do the status quo or just do what you think is safe. But to really get a song, and sometimes you get a genius song, sometimes you get crap, but at least, you know, you went for something. And then if we get something that we like, then you got to get up on stage and play. When you're on stage, again, the safest thing to do is just to stand there and play (laughs) and sort of hide behind your microphone or hide behind your instrument. But, you know, it takes a lot of guts if you're not used to it to actually get up and walk out on that catwalk and have your yeah. moment, you know, when you're supposed to, you know, man, I, you know, I'm not the lead singer, he is, he's got to deal with that thing yeah. of, then the song is, you got to talk to the audience, you know, mm-hmm. what do you say, and you can psych yourself out, but, yeah. uh, you know, I guess we've been doing it so long, it's, we don't think about that stuff as much anymore, yeah. but I do remember at the beginning that, oh my gosh, you know, the hardest thing to do is to play in a room in front of three people acoustically, <laughs> playing in front of 20,000 people is easier. You, know, you think it would be the opposite, yeah. but it's actually harder to have this intimacy. Because this the very first time yeah. I heard you play, it was the Blue Bay Cafe. <clears throat> oh, really? Yeah, because you came in, it was the Olay night, and okay. you came in and played Sneaky Jesus, and I was like, I love that song. <laughs> 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 and I thought to yeah, Julie, yeah. like, who is this person? Yeah. Oh my God, I have to interview him. Um, but that's, I mean, talk about intimate. That's the hardest thing as a songwriter is to do those rounds. That's, yeah. yeah, by far the hardest thing. And usually the ones yeah. you go see here, they've done so many. And they're, yeah, they're a little bit more comfortable that, than yeah. this young artist that are yeah. trying to... But, yeah. To reiterate what he was saying, I'd rather be up there with my boys on stage in a band, knowing you know yeah. you have that collective energy. It makes it much easier to do than solo artists. I guess, yeah. a different level of courage. And in a way, because uh, Jack Inger made a comment about that once, that he said when he did his solo acoustic tour, that he suddenly became aware, like, oh, shit, I've got nowhere to hide. Yeah. You know, I can't, if I feel yeah. slightly off tonight, I can't yeah. hide behind my bass player. I can't hide behind my guitar. I Absolutely. Can't. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm on my yeah. own. Do you feel a different, um, I'm trying to figure out the best way to phrase this, pressure is not quite, okay, I guess kind of responsibility because you are the front man. Like, do you feel that it's different? That Do you have to live up to something else than your bandmates or is it equal? I don't necessarily feel pressure from that. I do, um, as if I was doing anything, if I was a janitor, I would, I think that I would like make sure I bring it every day, like no matter what I'm right. doing. And, and I know these, I mean, Jeff sat me down before after shows and been like, hey, good show. I've seen you play great shows. I've seen you be great on stage, but good job tonight, not great. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You know, it's like, to have that accountability is I love that some people would not love that I don't feel pressure by that I think that's like necessary um, because our business is so confusing by the time it comes out of somebody's heart and by the time it reaches a fan all the emotions that it goes through and the people that have to hear it and give it a Mm -hmm. thumbs up or down and just to have somebody that's with you on a brother level on a love level to be able to say that's not your best man I love it how do you filter feedback in general because you can't let everything in but you need to get the constructive criticism in like how do you like where do you where do you guys go for critique of your work and how do you draw that line like this is a person I listen to this is not a person I listen yeah. to because I think that's really tough I think that I'm, I'm the I produce the group musically in the studio so I've yeah. sort of become the default musical leader <laughs> of the band for that so um I know they all look at me for musical criticism, I guess, yeah. and I'll give it whether they want to hear it or not sometimes. It's just my controlling personality. Yeah, but that's also but, a tough job to be in. Yeah. It's because it's as much as, as hard it, it is, is because to hear yeah. some, some of that stuff, it's also... You worry, easy to I know you've worried before and talked to me before about how to mention to somebody, you know, I don't want to come across, I don't want to hurt their feelings, I don't want to... Right. And at the end of the day, we know Jeff well enough to not let it hurt her. I, I do, and I know Brad does yeah. at this point, and Ian's probably figured that <laughs> out a little bit. That, <laughs> that if he loves you, then that's what happens, <clears throat> man. And if he, if he doesn't yeah. give a shit about you, then you're probably going to tell you, great show, man, see you next time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. I, I, yes? Yeah, you're definitely. Connecting with that? Definitely. Because <laughs> I, I, I was hearing when you guys were talking to Chuck, like that's the, the fact that you're here that's already, I mean, I'm sure there's a long line of people who would like to play. In the He's band. a talent. So the fact man. that you're here, that already is validation by yeah. itself. Cool. Yes. I, I guess I haven't really thought about it like that yet. I mean, I, I feel like I 
for sure still haven't proved myself, which um, I just think that it takes time, you know, and just right. show after show after show to r- get the exact energy that Blackjack Billy um, has, you know, and that we will have. Yeah, to work your way into that. Yeah, for sure. This is a slow business. You guys know this. <laughs> yeah. How do you handle that? That need to stay patient and to keep working and to wait for the results to show up. You know, sometimes he's good. He's better year, about it. Two years down the line, he's a lot better about it than I know I am. I'm. I'm Why getting... is it harder for you? I'm an rec- I'm an emotional cat a little bit. You know, I mean, I'm <laughs> high and low and highs and lows and, and just more of a kind of like well, a big brother, big kind of brother figure as right. far as like no and plus just his experience in the business. You know, he knows that lesson a lot. And no matter how many times you tell somebody how that's a slow business, when you get, like you said, you know, your heart and soul's in it, and you're going, "What? Well, what is going on? Why is nobody just loving it?" I think I think the only real difference philosophically between us is that I focus way more on where we're getting, where we're going, where I know where we will be, and not worrying about all the details right about now. how to get there. Yeah. Um, and it's very easy to get caught up in that. Oh my gosh! I got to play a show in two days, and my voice is hoarse. And what are we going to do? What's the set list? Where are we staying? And all these little details, and get worked up on all that. And uh, it's just you know, it all works out, and we'll play the show, and it'll be fine in the end. And yeah, there you go. And if this song hits, and this, <laughs> the next song hits, one of them's going to hit. Yeah. Right. And uh, you know, we'll get there. Yeah, kind of trusting that that. Trusting of that process, did that come easy, or are you just naturally fairly? And, and keeping away from attaching your, um, the way you feel about your music, letting that become attached to a critic's opinion of it, or somebody who doesn't even follow your band's quick yeah. little comment, you know, and keeping focused on the people that appreciate it and get it, and what mm-hmm. is it that they get, and what is it that they love, and you know, try to stay on that, but. You know, that's you, tough. It is, that's but hard. that's, that's fun hard. too. That's but also that's the so reward. Hard. It's it's the risk and the reward of getting to do it, though. You know, yeah. the, the highs are so much, so worth it. You know, getting to be on stage or getting to have a letter from a fan that says it got got me through the hospital bed when I was sick, or you know, just yeah. just have people that love your music, man, and getting to make it for them. You know, it's yeah, totally worth it. We're gonna use Ian as a prime example of of, uh, of this. Yeah, so let me ask you a question. Did you think two years ago that this was because you were going to be an extremely successful, famous person? I have no doubt with Blackjack, really, because we're going to be an extremely successful, famous <laughs> fan. <laughs> so, did you ever think that you would be in Belmont and that two years from then you were going to find yourself in a band like this? No. And then that was going to be your catapult to where you wanted to be no definitely enabling not. you to do all the other stuff you wanted to do yeah. no but no. he you know he saw the sign it just plopped on his on his lap and yeah he had the courage to follow that thing that showed up in his life yeah. as opposed to being set on well i'm going to graduate from belmont i'm going to be a writer or i'm going to be a yeah, solo that's artist the only or, that's thing. the only acceptable yeah. path he you know it just all of the universe mm-hmm. lined up and presented him with this opportunity when he says it yeah. plopped on his lap he means bread Plopped on his lap. Yeah. Gave him a lap dance and <laughs> I was like, good old stuff country. happened. Nothing <laughs> <laughs> says country music like a yeah. good old man on man lap dance. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. But that takes courage as much as it getting does. up on stage is just to seeing an opportunity and, and not stopping what necessarily you were path you were on, but changing your direction, changing yeah. your road. And that's happened several times in my career. Yeah. Like I honestly never thought I'd be in a band again until I met this guy and fell in love with writing with him and love performing with yeah. him. Now we're in a band. You know, it's just that takes courage too. So. And the and that adaptability, I think, because yeah. as you're asking him that question, I'm thinking, yes, he took the opportunity. You know, you took the opportunity when you could, but you were also ready for it. You've yes. already done the work. Yes. And I think that's true. that's something that Very sometimes feels forgotten. Like people are waiting. When is my shot? When is my shot? Well, what are you doing while you're waiting for that yeah, shot? Absolutely. It's just absolutely. As Very good. And point. being open to receive it when it shows up and recognizing exactly. it. Yeah. And and that quote I am so using, like, don't be afraid to suck. Oh my God, <laughs> fantastic. And we are fearless when it comes to sucking. <laughs> like we really like strive. But it's, yeah. did you guys see the, the history of the Eagles documentary? So yeah. Good. So There's good. a really They're great so nice moment. to each other. Early on, I know, right? Golly. Love the band. Um, that really early on where, you know, Glenn's working with, um, he was still living, you know, with Jackson Brown and they were talking to labels and 
the label's like, okay, you know, go write some stuff. And I was like, well, oh, but, you know, what if they're bad? And the label's like, well, they're going to be bad. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. And how he wasn't like, what? Yeah. Like, we don't have to be perfect from day one. Like, that yeah. that was a revelation to him. Yeah. And, you know, look Doug, I just wanted to call and tell you I hate these songs. But my publisher, that's how I met, that's how I first got in touch with him. He called me and said, I just wanted to call and tell you how much I hate these songs you sent me. And years later, he became my publisher. <laughs> but that's what we talked about yeah. before, that feedback. Those are the people you can go to for honesty. Like, these songs feedback. were so bad. Like, I had to stop what I'm doing and call you and let <laughs> you know. Just tell you. I feel like I need to share some of this with yeah, somebody. Yeah, what did he say on the heels of that? Yeah, I like your voice and come to Nashville, learn to write a song. And, learn to write a song. And but there's will, something there. I will work yeah. with you yeah. if you do that. And those, those, are, those people are diamonds. You know, yeah. They're people who see that potential and can, can work. To, to get it out of there. Thank you, Doug yeah. Howard. And to tie this all in, Doug Howard, now Dean of Belmont. Thank you, Ian. How? So yeah, there you go. See? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. second to last question. <laughs> this is a this is a, a serious one and then we'll have a not so serious question. Just sure, just right. end it. Um, and I'm looking for something specific. An example, not names. I think you mean specific. Um, the when you're thinking about, I'm trying to ignore that. <laughs> I'm not focusing on my question. When you think about some, a time where you weren't as patient as you should have been, maybe, or where you made a decision that turned out this wasn't quite right. Now that I know more, um, what was what was that situation, and how did that show up? Yeah. What was it that you were doing? Every like that? three months, I look back on the way I felt three months ago in this business and go, oh my God, it was all the way it should have been. It was all perfect. And I was, at the time, I'm like, freak out, mom. Because you're just like, oh, what are we going to do? It's a mess. It's chaos. And I look back and go, it was fine. It was perfect. Is it that impatience again? I'm terribly impatient, yeah. I am. Yeah. I wouldn't say that. What do you guys any, any comments on that? No being impatient? Things that you could, no, like things that you could... I probably hide it better. Not necessarily oh, be patient. Gosh, like sometimes it's... it's you, You're genuinely convinced that the time like this Boots is the right cruise. thing. But I thought Boots Cruise was ready, but it was right. now's the time. I think, I think it's so easy when you're in a moment and let's say your label's looking for your next single and you're writing a bunch of songs. It's so easy to say as you're writing them where they come out, this is it, we got it, we got our single, let's record, let's cut this, put it out, put it out, put it out. You just want to get out there so badly. Yeah. But you never know. They then uh, the right song might you might write tomorrow, but you could get caught up in that too long. But you know, it's it's very easy to be impatient about trying to rush to get music out. Yeah. Because you really want to be you really want to be out there. But yeah, I guess that's the that's the trick. Yeah. It's like you have to wait long enough, but you can't wait too long. It's yeah. That's that's the, that's the tricky part. When everything aligns beautifully, it's a wonderful thing. I know, but that's what you're saying. You know, when it all works, it's the best feeling. It's the best, and it's so worth it. (laughs) So worth it. Last question, much lighter. If you had to put together a soundtrack to your lives with songs that were kind of been with you as you were growing up, what what songs are on that record? Wow. Pretty much anything by the Beatles I would be down with. Who? I don't know. I don't know what band you're talking about. <laughs> what do you mean? Four of these guys. I think my my favorite. Beatles, <laughs> I think my favorite Beatles song is "Staying Alive." John Travolta's. Oh yeah, that's, that's a great, such that's a good great band. Beatles song. Yeah. Just the harmonies. Yeah. And Rubber Soul. Um, you can't always get what you want by the Rolling Stones. It's, uh, one but sometimes. Of the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you try, sometimes yeah. you might find that you get what you need. Exactly. Is is that is like the perfect Watch. description of the music business? Too. Uh, yep. <laughs> Me and Ian are life. Both, both Sublime fans. Yeah. Sublime is, is a big part of my childhood. He, 40 Ounces to Freedom, top to bottom, would take me back to like so many great memories. Yeah. So that's another example of something that's extremely country. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>